Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. We're going to take a look at the ancient apocalypse of Ezra, called Two Ezras in the King James Version, the 1611 version. And uh, this is a, a book and commentary by Ken Johnson. And you know I've had a a series or two, at least the Book of Enoch by Ken Johnson. I like uh, the, his commentary and his books, so we're going to take a look at it. It's very uh, fascinating, so uh, let's let's get into it. All right, so as I've mentioned in the past, um, you can get these books. This is on Amazon.com. You can get this for, I think, uh, $9.99 or $12.99. Um, it's something quite affordable. And I did want to do, uh, I was going to pull up a page about the Apocrypha books, but um, the Apocrypha are extra books in uh, mainly the, well, uh, largely the Catholic Bible and in a lot of King James Bibles also that you may see. And they include a number of books. And they're books that are considered <clears throat> not part of the canon, but interesting or important, etc. Well, not just interesting, but very important to um, the body of Christ, to the church, and have good informational, uh, good information in them. However, they are not, like I say, part of the canon inspired directly by God. Uh, but maybe like the Book of Enoch uh, or, you know, the Book of Jasher, the, these sorts of books. Um, uh, they're, uh, they parallel uh, very well with the Bible, and uh, they're written with uh, written by people who uh, come up in the Bible. And often the Bible actually recommends the reading of those books. It'll say, you know, as, as uh, written in the Book of, uh, you know, Jasher, the Book of Enoch. So the Bible um, <clears throat> mentions several of these apocryphal books, which gives a lot of credence to them and credibility. Uh, but this one's very interesting. This has a lot of very interesting end times stuff. So the ancient apocalypse of Ezra, called Two Ezras in the KJV. Uh, so we're going to go through and we'll see how far we get here. Again, this is by Ken Johnson, and he has his commentary here. Um, so there's a, a boatload. Uh, um, oops, let me go back there. Yeah, there's a boatload of... Uh, interesting subjects in here. So it starts off with the judgment of Israel, um, kind of the story of the Bible of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, speaks about the diaspora and speaks about the rapture and the sin nature, you know, goes through uh, almost the, you know, the whole biblical story and uh, time left until the messianic kingdom, the rapture and the return of those raptured. So again, paralleling uh, what we understand of the Bible where the, uh, the Christians, the body of Christ, will be raptured out, and then they will come back to earth with Christ <clears throat> and rule and reign for a thousand years. And uh, it speaks of the seven-year uh, seven tribulation, apparently, and, uh, and lots of visions, etc. So very interesting stuff. But like I say, there's a lot of really good content in here. So let's get to it. So I just want to read some of the, the primer here, and uh, you'll recall I read this um, in a teaser a couple weeks ago, but I want to go over it again. So the KJV 1611 Bible was produced by the Anglican Church under the order of King James I. It contains the Old and New Testaments totaling 66 books. These are the same ones we have in most uh, modern Bibles today. Every major group of Christians, Catholic, Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox accept that 66 books as the inspired Word of God uh, <clears throat> between the Old Testament and the New Testament was a section of disputed books the middle section called the Apocrypha contained the books accepted by the Roman Catholics but disputed by the Anglicans. So anyways, it, uh, and then it speaks about the Anglican Church accepting one of the books and the Roman Catholic not accepting it. Uh, the Apocalypse of Ec Ezra is called Two Ezras in the KJV 1611. The book has a series of visions about theology and the end times. And then it speaks of the surviving manuscripts of this. I won't go about, uh, into these... these uh, basically give a summary of each of the chapters, and uh, that's fine. We're, we're going to have a look at the chapters. Um, I will note this, however, and this is uh, what Ken Johnson adds. He says, we must always judge every biblical text, every extra biblical text, I should say, claiming to teach theology or prophecy by the 66 books of the Bible. We need to make sure there's parallels, make sure that what we're reading agrees with the Bible, because God is not going to God is not the author of uh, contra contradiction. And so if it does contradict the Bible, then it cannot be uh, trust, uh, trustworthy. It cannot be trusted as a source. 
Even if this work is legitimate and contains real prophecy, it still may be uh, mistranslated either deliberately or by mistake, Ken says. So we're going to get into a bit of the um, beginning story of it. Um, I'm not going to read all of it, um, but we're going to take a look at uh, the beginning because this really, this is really the, the you know the, the biblical story. Um, God sets uh, Israel, His people, aside, and they reject Him, and and so He turns to the Gentiles, and that's what this starts as. So let's start at Israel rejects the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Arise and show my people their sinful deeds, so that they can tell their children's." Uh, children about the wickedness which they have done against me because they even went beyond the sins of the fathers and have forgotten me and have worshipped strange gods. And so that's exactly what uh, Israel does as we all understand. And, and it goes on and says, I led you through the sea in the beginning and gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader. I gave you a light in a pillar of light. And so a whole list of things that God has done uh, for the Jews and still uh, they don't accept him. Uh, then I had pity on you and gave you manna to eat. Uh, you ate angels' bread. When you were thirsty, didn't I cleave the rock and water flowed out of it uh, to quench your thirst? Because of the heat, I covered you with leaves of trees. And so these are all, you know, common things that the, these very these line up very well uh, with the with the biblical stories that we know of as happening. We know we can place all these statements in the Bible. So what does he do that when Israel rejects um, uh, God? Well, the Lord turns to other nations, i.e. the Gentile nations. What will I do to you, O Jacob, to you, Judah, since you will not obey me? I will turn to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. Seeing you have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. And really, this is what um, sets off, uh, what, this is what sets in order uh, the end time events. This is, what sets, this is what sets in order the seven year tribulation, because if it wasn't for Israel rejecting God, then we there would be no need uh, for the seven year tribulation. If they accepted Jesus as Messiah, they would need the seven year tribulation. The, se the seven year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. And if you watch J.D. Farag, you'll recognize uh, that. So that's what he did. He told he turned to the Gentiles, and this sets up the rest of history, uh, because uh, prophecy is then uh, going to be fulfilled according to. And because of uh, the Jews rejecting the Messiah, which they will uh, ultimately uh, understand and receive, they will understand that Jesus uh, is the Messiah, but it will take the abomination of desolation and the Antichrist sitting on the throne in the third temple uh, for them to come to that conclusion. Um, Your children will not be fruitful, for you, they have despised my commandment and done the thing that is evil before me. Your houses I will, will I give to the people that will come whom, not having heard of me, yet believe in me, and that's us, we, we haven't, uh, uh, well, we haven't seen Jesus, uh, but we believe in him, and I, that's coming, I guess. Um, who have not having heard of me, yet believe in me, to whom I have not shown any signs, yet they will do uh, that which I commanded them. They have seen no prophets, yet they will remember their sins, and we have seen no prophets, so that's kind of the rest of us, um, or I don't, we haven't seen prophets that I know of anyways. And that's, uh, that could be a good argument to suggest that um, God uh, doesn't always show signs and wonders um, uh, within his people. Um, maybe, maybe he does now, maybe he doesn't. I think the majority of times, especially in unbelieving nations like North America, uh, our faith is very lukewarm. Um, maybe he doesn't show that anymore uh, as much as uh, we would like him to because of our lack of faith. They have seen no prophets, yet they will remember their sins and repent of them. I witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness, though they have not seen me with their physical eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. Now, brother, behold the glory and see the people come from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi who is called also a messenger of the Lord. It's interesting that that follows the order of books that we have. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know if he has commentary with that, but that's interesting that it does follow the current known order that we have in the Bible. So Ken, Ken Johnson's commentary here, this chapter simply affirms that the nation of Israel rejected the laws through constant idolatry and willful ignorance of God's prophecies um, that God gave them and that God turned to the Gentiles 
nations, plural, he, he uh, highlights there. As Apostle Paul stated when he quoted Isaiah 28, it is in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that uh, will not uh, all, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Paul said uh, that God has not rejected the Jews. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, Romans 11. So Ken really does a good job of, job of understanding the parallels between the, the, the books that he's uh, looking at, the Apocrypha, in this case, uh, um, the two Esdras, and paralleling that with biblical scriptures so that we can see and understand that it lines up and, uh, and that there is some interesting uh, content here. So the prophet Hosea predicted the same thing. He says, I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel will be as sand. So there's going to be a lot of them of the sea, which cannot be measured or no, nor numbered. Um, and it will come to pass that in the place where it, said, it is said unto them, Ye are not my people, there will be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Verse 38 might have been what Jesus had in mind when he stated, And I say unto you that many will come from the east and west and will sit down with Abraham and Isaac, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that comes from Matthew. <clears throat> so we get into the second chapter here and we're going we're going real quick here. Be, um, well, because we don't have to cover this all. If you, under, if you know your Bible, and I'm assuming you have some uh, base of understanding of the Bible, you know that uh, a diaspora occurred. Israel was um, um, sent away at, to all different countries around the world. And that's what this is talking about here. So we're not getting into the prophecies yet. But it's speaking of the uh, diaspora. And, uh, and then it speaks of uh, the kingdom of Judah restored. Um, uh, in 1948 that occurred. And then the resurrection of the true believers. Now the morality of life. I just figured I'd read this thing because this is interesting. Do right to the widow. Judge for the fatherless. Give to the poor. Uh, defend the orphan. Clothe the naked. Heal the broken and weak. Laugh not at a lame man to scorn. Defend the maimed and let the blind come into sight of my clearness. Keep the old and young within your walls. Wherever you find the dead, take them and bury them. And I will give you the first place in my resurrection. So very... Simple, basic instructions for morality. All right, now we get into the number sealed and uh, the rapture. Let's take a look at this. I, Ezra, received a charge from the Lord upon Mount Horeb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto the, them, they rejected me and despised the Lord's commandment. Therefore I say unto you, O you heathen, that hear and understood, look for the shepherd. He will give you everlasting rest, for he is near at hand and that will come in the end of the age. Be ready for the rewards of the kingdom, for everlasting light shall shine upon you eternally. Flee the shadow of this world, receive uh, the joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my Savior openly, I receive the gift that is given to you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him who has led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise and stand, behold the number of those that are sealed in the feast of the Lord. Interesting there, and uh, we'll soon see what uh, Ken thinks of that. Which are departed. From the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments uh, robes white as snow because our sin has been washed away take your number O zion and shut up those of yours that are clothed in white uh, which have fulfilled the law of the lord the number of your children whom you long for is fulfilled beseech the power of the lord that your pa people uh, which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed and that starts talking about the messiah here I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. In the midst of them there was a young man of high stature, taller than the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns. Um, but he was more exalted than all of them, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they who have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God, now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is that? Uh, that uh, is it that crowns them and gives them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed. 
Then began I greatly to commend them who stood so firmly in the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, Go your way and tell the people the wondrous things that you have seen from the Lord your God in this vision. So what does Ken say about this? Notice verse 7 is talking about the time when Israel, it, the nation of Israel would be scattered throughout the world. And that's the part we didn't read, but uh, we knew about that. That was a Roman dispersion which lasted 80, 132 to 80, 1948, which is when they came back together as a nation in the land of Israel. In verses 33 to 38, uh, there are a certain number of Gentiles who would be sealed and given glorified bodies, raptured. There, there are also a certain number of those uh, of Zion who are shut up, resurrected. Notice that this event happens on a feast day. Huh. Feast of trumpets. Interesting. Interesting parallel there. Interesting hint, maybe. Paul said it would be on the festival of the last trump, or Rosh Hashanah, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Interesting that Ken thinks that uh, the rapture occurs on the Feast of Trumpets. Um, so, what are we at here? 16 minutes. Um, that was, uh, boy, that went quick. Um, mainly because I didn't read a, a ton of it. Uh, chapter 3 gets into Adam and the Flood. And uh, we're going to take uh, a further look at this. Um, but it kind of goes through more of the history of the Bible. Um, what's happening, etc. Um, I think we'll get into, let's see, the times of the kingdom. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll get into um, this one next one, uh, next Sunday. And uh, yeah, I think this is uh, okay for now. I know some of you will be like, no, go on, go on. Um, we'll leave it there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and go through um, the next section here and see what we want to cover. Like I said, I don't want to take your time. I don't want to cover everything. I don't want to read uh everything uh, in there uh, but cover just the very interesting stuff so very interesting stuff about the rapture about uh, that it's going to happen on a feast that should be good confirmation and i mean the parallels uh in in the reading that you can just see that that parallels the bible very well so i i couldn't argue with anything that the book uh, the second book of esdras uh said in there and apparently ken couldn't either um it, it is all it all makes a lot of sense it all uh, lines up with scripture so far as i know it and interesting book. So definitely, uh, I'm going to say go out there and get it. Uh, support Ken Johnson. And uh, we'll continue this next week. And uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.